Welcome to Unique 6, the last one of this week. The topic is the while loop, another loop. And the question is, why do we need a second loop besides the for loop? For loops are well suited if you have a sequence like a list or a tuple. However, sometimes you would like to loop, you would like to rerun the same statements, but you do not have a sequence. Maybe you do not even know how often you would like to loop. Take for example the following scenario. In an ATM you have to enter your PIN and you have to re-enter it until you enter the correct PIN. However, at the very beginning you do not know if the right PIN, the correct PIN has been entered the first time, maybe the second time, the third time. So you have to loop, but right at the beginning you do not know how often you have to loop. Take another example. Sometimes you would like to grab input, you like to grab an integer, but the input function always delivers only a string. So you have to convert it, you have to cast it into an integer first. And you know the problem. If the user has entered some characters like A, B, C, D, then the program will run into an error. So you would like to first check if the right, if the, if the uh, input value is castable, if it can be converted to an integer, and the user has to re-enter the, in, the input as long as it consists just of digits. And again, you do not know how often the user has to retype his input. In this situation, a for loop doesn't fit. In this situation, a while loop works much better. So how does a while loop look like? As you can see, the syntax starts with the keyword while, and then like in these if statements, we do have a condition. So something which is either true or false. And again, we have some indented statement, statement one to statement n, which forms a while block. And if the condition is true, you run through these statements. In contrast to the if statement, you then go back to the very beginning, to the while, and check the condition again. And if it's still true, you again run these statements. And you repeat this as often until this condition is finally false. And then you continue behind this while block. Let's check this in our notebooks. So it's showtime again, open your notebook. So again, we have our while loops, the syntax, while condition statement one to n. And as I said right now, we check first our condition. Is it true or is it false? Then we go through the statements, if it is true, and start again. Yeah. Take again this example. Yeah. You're expecting a number. Somebody enters simply some characters and the program crashes. We can now use this isDecimal method yeah? and this gives back either true or false depending on if the string contains simply decimal or if there is a non-decimal character in there as well. And now we finally can uh, safeguard our input. Yeah? So if we rerun it, yeah, we can enter first ASDSD, uh, try it again, but if we finally enter a number, the program runs through and prints out the number. Let's check it in detail. Yeah? So we have first to initialize a variable with non-digit value, so an x for example, a string uh, with a value x. Then we go into our while loop and we check number is decimal. If there is an x, this one is false, so we bring it to true by putting a not in front of it and then we simply ask number equals to input and so on. And we start again by checking is number decimal. If it is decimal then it would become true. If we convert it with a not it would be false and we jump right after the 
um, while loop. And you see the conversion of this string number into an integer is done after the while loop. So this while loop saves the program for crashing down simply because somebody entered a string with consist consisting of uh, characters. And finally, we can print this number. And as you have seen during the execution, we can re-enter wrong um, numbers, numbers consisting of letters, as often as we want to, but the first time we enter a correct value, we're out. You see, of course, it is a little bit cumbersome because you have to, uh, this initial statement where we have to enter this number equals to x, which is some kind of initialization for this y loop. Yeah, so we could do it a little bit differently and uh, say we do not enter number equals to x, but start with number equals to input, the same statement as we have in here. So if you go in here and rerun it, yeah, so we get through right the first time. So what ha happens actually in here is that we entered one, two, three, which is a decimal. So this statement, this complete statement with a not becomes false right from the beginning. We do not go into the while loop at all. We directly jump into um, the end behind this while loop and uh, cast this string into an integer and print it out. Still, the while loop um, saved our life and the program is running through. So if we start it again, um, enter some text values, some characters, you see we in the while loop we are looping. Finally, if we enter digits only, then the program comes to an end. However, this uh, while loop is still not looking well because you have actually two types, times the same statements very close to each other. And that's not, uh, doesn't look very good. Can do the same with our secret pin. So now we assume um, that the pin is entered correctly. At least we assume that an integer is entered. So the secret pin is actually one, two, three, four. You can see it in here. And now we simply check what happens. So if we enter two, three, four, we get the pin was wrong. Same reason as before. We compare our pin, what we have just entered, with our secret pin. And as long as it's not the same, we stay in our loop. So we re-enter. We can at a thousand times. Finally, we do enter the correct number and again, this Y loop is uh, finished and we continue right after. Yeah. Of course, we can make this a little bit more complicated. You know, in reality, um, the ATM wouldn't be really secure if uh, somebody could enter a pin again and again and again. Yeah. So usually it's limited and again here we have entered a new variable tries, yeah, which is initialized by one. And if we now go into it, yeah, we type several times our pin, then it says, okay, you entered the wrong pin three times, your card will be confiscated. Yeah, you see this variable tries is increased every round and these uh, And this condition has become more complex by composing two smaller conditions, yeah, tries smaller than three into a big one. Yeah, but what you can see here is how the Y loop works. And uh, you can try to do this with a for loop and it will be really a mess. However, this Y loop um, is sometimes a little bit more complicated. It leads to more, more errors. So let's take an example where a for loop would be better um, suited for. Take an example who would like to have a counter. Yeah? So simply um, a program which prints out the number 1 to 10. Yeah? Actually, 
it works quite fine. Yeah, we initialize a, a variable with the value one. Yeah, we check in the while loop if it is smaller than 10. Yeah, we print it out and at the end we increase it. And actually it's fine. However, there are certain statements where this loop could fail. For example, yeah, if we take this print command and put it in the end, I comment it out in here. Program looks very much the same. However, now we are running from 2 to 11. Why? Because we now first increment and then do a print out. So we can maybe do a correction. We start with a zero in here. Uh, sorry. Uh, now it works again when it comes to the start. We have a one at the end, but it goes up to the 11. So we maybe change not equal and smaller, but just smaller and we come to it like this. So you see there is several parts where you can change the way this while loop is running and this makes it really error prone. So if you use this type of program, you should especially check boundary values. That means in this case, if this um, loop should run from 1 to 10, you should check the values 0 and 1. The one is part of the loop, the other one is not. And you should check the 10 and the 11. Again, the 10 is part, the 11 is not. Yeah? So in this case, better take a for loop. Another error which might, which might occur could be an infinite loop. So we take the same um, example as above. However, now we forget, yeah, we comment it out, that we increment the value, um, this variable i by one. So what will happen? Yeah, actually, you will run infinite, an infinite time through this loop because the i, the variable, will always stay at the initial value. Yeah, so you see it goes on and goes on. And if you really go down, you can't go down, it's still running. So here we have to be, use brute force and restart our kernel, set it back, yeah, and by that stop this loop from working. Of course, we could repair it. Oops, now it's not, the intention is not correct, indentation is not correct. And here it looks again fine. So repair it again. Example, guessing a random number. That's a nice small gain you could now create. So the first part you do not understand, but um, this one simply creates a random integer, which is afterwards assigned to secret number. And as you don't understand how it goes, you simply do not know what uh, number is behind it. And now you can use this while loop to enter guesses and the program will always respond either the number is too big or the number is too small. Yeah? And finally, if you read it, reach the number, the while loop will stop. You see guessed number uh, is not equal secret number as long as this is true. As long as you have not guessed the right number, you stay in this loop. So please guess a number. 15, yeah? number 50 was too small. Let's say 70, still too small. Let's say 85, it's still too small. Uh, 95, number is too small. 99, it's too big. 98. Oh, correct, 98 was the number you were looking for. Give it a try by yourself. Run it several times to see that really a random number has been created. There is one extra when it comes to the for loop, which is the keyword break. So what you can do, um, you can make you can make um, the while loop a little bit more complex by using the keyword break. If you run into this break keyword, then the program uh, will directly leave the while loop. 
Yeah, so will you, you will not run up to the end of the loop, it will directly jump out of the Y loop. Why could this be an option? Okay, again, let's uh, have a situation like the following. You have a list of students which is empty right at the beginning. And then you would simply like to add new students. Yeah? You ask for input, namely matricul matriculation number, a name, a first name, uh, and you append the result, um, a tuple in this list, um, and uh, you continue until no further student should be entered. And the user can say so by simply entering an empty return. And we always check if this empty return has occurred and if this, if this is the case then we break and we directly jump out to this print command at the very end. And then this while true which looks strange at the very beginning and becomes suddenly quite powerful. You simply say you stay within a loop. You actually do not um, give a condition to end. You say it's basically an infinite loop However, it's not infinite because you have the break in between. And this break has been hidden behind an if statement. Otherwise, you would directly run into this break the first time. And actually, this um, pattern would not make sense at all. Let's give it a try. Matriculation number one, two, three. Enter name. Uh, Miller. Peter. Uh, two, three, four. Uh, what is uh, the name? Potter, Jane. And now I say I enter an empty return. Yeah. What you can see is the while loop is stopped, um, and the program continues at the very end. Let's make a small exercise at the very end. And again, you can stop the video here. You can try to find your solution, a solution by yourself. And um, you can then continue once you have found it and compare it to the solution we have uh, in here. So what is the idea? You have a property on your bank. Maybe you have 10,000 euros. You get a certain percentage, let's say five. These one should be uh, gathered by an input. And then you can observe your amount of money increasing year by year. So let's simply start first with some constant value should be 10,000. We later on um, will replace it by an input and we say the percentage equal to 5. And then simply what is the calculation? We, what we have is a value which gets changed. Value times 1, sorry in bracket, 1 plus 100, uh, sorry, percentage divided by 5. And we print this value out. Oh, sorry, percentage by 100, 5%. And then you can see after one year, you have this 10,500. Now this part shall be repeated as long as we have doubled our amount. Now, we do not know how often this is, so the Y loop fits quite well. So what we have to say is here, while um, value smaller than 20,000, we we'll actually have to increase it here. And now we run it. You can see the amount is really becoming bigger. Yeah? And it's one stops once we have topped our 20,000. Now, of course, we can uh, make things a little bit nicer. Um, we can say we start with year um, equals to zero. And we can say here we print out 
year, comma, colon, year, um, and the value. Oh, we should have this in between. And of course, we then have to say year is increased by one. Yeah? So actually it looks quite okay. Now what we have still to do is to change the value equals to a constant 10,000. We have to enter inputs. Yeah? So we say input um, starting capital. And of course, we do the same with the percentage. Um, and then we have um, this problem that's a 20,000, which has been just double the 10,000. We have to find another value in here. And what we can say is here, initial value equal to value. And we say here, it's initial value. So let's give it a try again. Enter the same values as before. Mm. Okay, we have to say double two times again 10,000 and 5%. Actually, we come to the same result. Yeah? And now we can, of course, observe if we have a short, lower percentage, yeah? what will happen 10,000 and just 2%. Then we have to wait, wait much more time. But you see, even with 2%, after 35 years, you have doubled your amount of money. So what have you learned in this unit? There is a second loop, the Y loop. You know which situations um, are well suited for Y loops, namely there is no sequence and you do not know right at the beginning how often you would like to loop. You know the syntax and the semantics of the loop. You know typical arrows yeah, and where to look to get this Y loop running correctly. And finally, you have seen this keyword break, which makes this while loop a little bit more powerful.